Welcome back to Online Games. I'm Mark Mandel. Uh, today we're going to talk about another fun topic. Uh, we're going to talk about relay servers and how they apply to multiplayer games as another architectural pattern that is commonly used for these types of games. So um, let's let's start at the top. So pretty much where we usually start is somewhere like uh, so. You know, we have our computer. Right, and there's another computer and they're playing a game. Um, I'm going to like just do something simple, like say each player is a triangle. And uh, what we wanna do here is, you know, this is an orange triangle, this is a pink triangle. And we want to make sure that we have both triangles aware of what's happening on both computers. And in fact, what we actually have here, uh, if we wanna be more specific in this particular scenario, which I think will work really well, is let's say we have multiple computers. Um, Maybe we just have a very simple 2D game, something like that. Um, and we want every single computer to be aware of exactly what's happening, you know, inside each game with each player, with each thing, you know, each triangle as it exists across each of these games. And we need that information to persist, you know, as we're playing around the internet. Okay, so that gives us some ideas, right? Like that's moving, that's moving, right? We will want them to have the same state. Um, and we want that information in this particular instance between all these computers talking to each other, right? Multiplayer game over the internet. How do we get this kind of stuff syncing? And, and in this particular scenario, um, we're gonna look at like a simpler game, I think, which is kind of important here, where really what we want is just the information from all of the players to go to all of the other players so that they can keep track of what it, what's going on. There isn't a lot of simulation here. There's not a lot of like physics going on. Uh, authority maybe isn't necessarily as huge an issue. Uh, so we really just really want sort of information sharing between all the computers. Now, previous ones or previous recording we just did, we, did, we talked about peer-to-peer. -peer. Uh, and you can set up a peer-to-peer -peer environment where all computers talk to all computers. Can get a little messy and can be a little bit complicated because if players drop or players come in and out, say this player disappears, uh, we suddenly look in an environment where like suddenly this connection here, this connection here, this connection here. How do we rebalance this on the fly with this mesh network? And it gets, it gets, it gets complicated, right? And that's not particularly easy. And then we have all the other things like NAT traversal we talked about, like how do you traverse firewalls and all that kind of fun stuff, and that gets messy. So this is a really good example of where a relay server may come into play. So if we had a relay server, uh, this becomes a lot simpler. So let's say we have our four players, right? We have our four players like we did previously. Um, and now we're gonna say, okay, period appears out. Uh, we don't need fully dedicated game server. We're not doing um, the full simulation. Uh, so this will be our internet. But what we're gonna do is just have, and I'm gonna draw this really thin. This is our really thin relay server. And the job of the relay server here is to say, this player here is gonna send data up. Right? I'm sending information up to this relay server. And the primary job, and it may do a little bit more, don't get me wrong, uh, of this relay server is then to say, okay, cool, I got that information. Now I'm gonna send that back down to each of these players. Um, and that makes things much simpler. You can see this is so much simpler than what we saw previously with that whole mesh pattern coding across. Uh, now all of a sudden we can just basically treat this like almost like an echo server in many ways, where as data comes up to the relay server, its job is to send it out to everything. So the relay server needs to be aware of each individual game client that sits down here, right? That's important. But uh, outside of that, and very similar to dedicated game server, it doesn't need to do much more else than that. And we don't have that issue of NAT traversal, right? Firewalls, we don't care about firewall rules here for these machines, right? They can just have that back and forth communication as they would previously. Now, it is worth noting, right? We do have a process running here. Um, that does mean that, uh, you know, we want to spend, you know, some money, right? All right, so doing this. But rather than being lots of money with like a dedicated game server that may have a requirement of say one or two CPUs and a bunch of memory to handle say 100 players or 50 players or even 10 players or 16, uh, we can probably run lots and lots of these relay servers. They're very lightweight processes. So that's that's super nice as well. Um, and we can also do you know some very lightweight processing of stuff here at the relay server if we so desire um, to process packets, make sure things, uh, we can do some light cheating detection, for example, uh, make sure that the information coming from here is legit. 
um, and the, the, you know, and can process and send back information here at an appropriate way as well. So we can do some lightweight stuff, which is super nice. And that also means, right, we want to talk about this and I kind of want to just like highlight it, right? Like previously, if you have, you know, this is your, your tower, your virtual tower running somewhere in the cloud, you know, you might, you know, if we were talking about a full simulation server, you can maybe run, you know, three or four of these maybe 515, depending, you know, if you have a, you know, eight CPU box, maybe you can run four of them. If you have 32 CPU, right, something like that, you might be able to do that. But, you know, these sort of things usually run like very much, you know, a relay server. You're looking at, you know, percentages of CPU space, you know, your memory space is gonna be so much smaller. So you can really run, even potentially, I've seen cases where people run thousands of these things on these particular servers. So your your costs for running this infrared infrastructure so much lower than it would be for a full dedicated game server, but very particular for that particular type of game type. So really that's it. There's nothing uh, There's nothing really majorly special about relay servers. Um, they're super nice if, they, if your gameplay sort of works for that. Uh, so I'll, I'll give you some, uh, some, some use cases I, I like to consider for this. So first use case, uh, as I said before, so simpler type games, i.e. like low simulation, for example, 2D type games would be a really good example. You might have lower concerns with cheating, for example, as well. That might be another one. Although that being said, you could put some put some processes in place inside your relay server to, to combat cheating as well, which is also super nice. And an environment in which you don't want to deal with, say, NAT or a firewall traversal, which can be an issue with peer-to-peer, -peer, or host migration may be a complicated issue for you uh, if, you know, say, one particular instance of a peer-to-peer -peer network has dropped out. So these are, these are really great use cases for this. Uh, it's a great pattern, so I just want to make sure you're aware of it. So super quick one today, uh, just covering relay patterns, really simple pattern, but hugely powerful for certain types of games. Just kind of wanted to go through it today. If you have questions about any of it, please put it in the comments below or reach out to me on any of the social medias here. Uh, you can follow me here on Twitter, especially. Uh, or hit me up on Twitch when I'm doing a live stream. If there are particular topics that you want me to cover, please also put those in the comments below or reach out to me on any of the social medias that you see here. I uh, would love to have the suggestions. I've got a long list, but also great to hear from everyone else. Finally, if you like it, please like and subscribe. Definitely love to have those numbers go up. Otherwise, I'll see you all in a little while with another online game servers tech video.